the ground zero for today. We, we are defined by the word, defined by the truth. And we trust in God for a word from within the word, the Amplified Classic Edition. And it is Jude 1 and verse 21. God and keep yourselves in the love of God. Expect and patiently wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, which will bring you unto eternal love. Now, that's amazing because we actually find out through Scripture that Jesus came to give us life and life abundantly, this life right here and now. And obviously, once we die, we live for eternity and we live in the kingdom of heaven. But as the Scripture is saying, it is also here and now. So God and keep yourselves in the love of God. So you've got to make sure that the love of God is always around you. And the love of God does include patience. Uh, but it does say, expect and patiently wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that is not something that's going to happen just once we die. It's something that happens and comes to us now. And you must expect it. It's very, very important. The, the Word of God is there to move, uh, to change, to arrest, to to manifest. And if it's not happening, you must expect it. And if it's not happening, well, Lord, what's happening? Is there anything out of place? Is there... Sometimes it's just a waiting game. And my advice is to stay faithful, which means doing the right thing over and 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 over until one day it all just comes together. And I trust that it's going to happen for you right here, right now. Verse 22, and refute so as to convict some who dispute with you. And on some have mercy who waver and doubt. Ah, this is a bit difficult. So here, while we are guarding and keeping ourselves in the love of God, which is yeah, God loves us and it's, it's available and it's happening. He loved us before we even knew it. So it is ours so we can abide in that and we're waiting for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, to manifest. And we refute so as to convict some who dispute with us by the very example and the lives that we live. And on some have mercy who waver and doubt. Sometimes it's a bit difficult. You trying to move a team, you trying to get people moving forward, and all we can remember is, as leaders, is we only as fast as the slowest person. And instead of us running back and moaning at the person who's just not getting it or the person who's just not able to, for whatever reason, it might just be fear, insecurity, they just might not be as quick as you. Now you might be a good person and you are getting it right and you've paid such a wonderful price but you need to be patient with others because people make mistakes including you and you've made more than enough mistakes to understand god's grace and mercy for you and have mercy over those people who are wavering because you and i were both there at that same place at one point in our lives Verse 23, strive to save others, snatching them out of the fire. On others take pity, but with fear. Loathe even the garments spotted by the flesh and polluted by their sensuality. This is also very important because when we take pity, but with fear, you know that you and I were fearfully and wonderfully made. And how would God fearfully make us? If he's the Almighty, surely, surely he wasn't fearful. Well, it says he was, but it's the same fear we're talking about now. It's be careful that it works out the way you intend it to work out. Don't go and get involved with people who are being sensual or living in their flesh and be won over the, by them. You can go rescue them, like save others, snatch them out of the fire, but be careful you don't get burnt. Be careful you don't get burnt. There's times that I've reached into the fire to save somebody and I almost got pulled in. Be very careful. I've got blisters and scars on my hands where I've had to be fearful. In other words, be careful that it doesn't go wrong. But snatch them if you can. If not, have pity on them. Now to him, verse 24, who is able to keep you. Now this is the Lord Jesus Christ. Without stumbling or slipping or failing, falling, and to present you unblemished, blameless, and faultless before the presence of his glory in triumphant joy and exaltation with unspeakable ecstatic delight. Now, that's very important there because the only way that you are going to not stumble or slip into the fire 
or fall is be very careful. Do not live in the life of I. It says there right in the beginning when we started, guard and keep yourselves in the love of God. Make sure you are always in the presence of the Father, in the presence of the Godhead. There is your safest place. And out of that, you reach out of that strength to pluck people out of the fire, to save those who have stumbled, because he will stop you. But you must stay in his presence, stay in his word. Let the word of God equip you as to keep your feet grounded in Christ as you reach up. So you hold Jesus' hand as he holds you to reach up and pluck those others out, snatching them out of the fire. Verse 25, to the one only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, splendor, majesty, might, and dominion, and power and authority before all time and now and forever, and to all ages of eternity. Amen. So be it. Very, very important here. God always gets the glory for what you and I do. Always you get the reward. And as you notice in this whole scripture from Jude 1, 21 to 25, it, there's a responsibility for you and I to stay and guard ourselves in the love of God, patiently wait for the Lord Jesus Christ to bring us into eternal life, but you will experience it here on earth. And you're going to have to refute and prove to others that what you do and who you are does work and it is true in the Bible is it is workable. It 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 performs miracle signs and wonders because it refers you to the word of God and it's the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. And watch here. Save others, snatch them out of the fire. On others take pity, but be careful. Be careful of being in the flesh, living in the life of I, and be polluted by that sensuality of oh, it tastes good, it feels good, it looks good. Don't forsake the love of Christ in your life for the sake of somebody else who looks like they've got it. You've got it all. You're the strong one. Hold tighter to Jesus as you hold tight to those, those that you pull out of the fire. We have a responsibility to live a life that will help others also live for eternity. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We can be us and you can be you. And together, Father, we can make this happen for that lost soul, for that one person that just needed to hear this right here, right now, Father. And they are being plucked out of that fire for from eternal devastation, Father. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your word, which is an incredible boundary in our life, Father. That it's our ground zero, Father. And that one that says, guard your heart above all else, Father. And may we be strengthened in guarding our love, Father, for you and staying in that love. And Father, when we are weak or we feel we're losing it, we know that we have been kind of spending too much time in the world and not enough time in your arms. And Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your goodness that is there to lead us to repentance. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah.